This video was made possible by the Enough mousepad, the only desk mousepad you'll ever need. More on it at the end of this video. The newly released Samsung M8 monitor has triggered a lot of interest among buyers. Many of my viewers are waiting for this video and I understand why. The successor to the affordable M7 Swiss Army Knife monitor looks exceptionally stylish and retains some of the best features from the older model while offering some improvements, at least on paper. The question is, are those suitable improvements and are they worth the 300 plus increase in price? Is it possible that the M8 is just an M7 wearing a fancier dress? Let's take a look. The M8 is a 32-inch 4K 16x9 monitor in a class of its own. As I mentioned in my last desk setup video, which I'll link at the end of this one, its only real competitor would be the predecessor, the M7. The reason for that is the panel type and the unique set of features. Many people have compared the M8 with IPS competitors, even some with the Apple Studio display, which might make some sense on paper. However, I disagree with this comparison since the M8 is not IPS, it's a VA panel. Not necessarily a bad thing. In my monitor guide, I explained the difference between the panel types and I showed that the VA stands between the inferior TN technology and the gold standard IPS. For the most part, VA lacks the excellent view angles of IPS and is slightly slower in response times but catches up when it comes to contrast levels and in the case of the M8 price. Also, regarding productivity, response time is not essential and viewing angles may be annoying to look at only at certain angles. When you sit in front of the M8, things are just fine. Now that we understand the fundamentals, let's see what separates it from the 32-inch 4K monitor pack. The M8 is as much of a monitor as it is a TV, like its older brother, the M7. Even if you don't connect it to a laptop or desktop, you can use it as a smart TV on its own and also proclaim it a computer-like thing. It runs the Samsung Tizen platform, which gives you access to all the typical Samsung smart features and apps, but that's not all. The built-in tools like Microsoft 365 and remote connectivity alongside the ability to connect Bluetooth peripherals turns it into a standalone productivity tool. To top it all off, Samsung has added a slim fit removable camera in the package, which I have some thoughts about, which I'll share in a moment. In the meantime, suppose you don't want to use the monitor as a monitor, but as a TV. In that case, you can just detach the camera and keep the display as aesthetically pleasing as possible. Also, Samsung wants us to use the SmartThings app and ecosystem with the M8, essentially turning it into an intelligent hub. AirPlay is supported as usual, Although 4K is not something to hold your breath for, it's 1080p. The famous Bixby is here again, but I imagine it felt lonely and needed a friend in the form of Amazon Alexa. As you can see, this monitor is unlike any other. The most appealing M8 thing, however, is its looks. It's thin, stylish and exquisite looking. It comes in various colors, all of which will brighten up every room and make it stand out. However, all of these incredible looks are the M8's Achilles heel. I'll use this opportunity to lift up this product's beautiful curtains and reveal some hidden dark secrets. Throughout the years, people have learned that thinness is always at something else's expense. I'll warm up with the fact that the monitor does not have a VESA mount on the back. The lower mounting point and the thin profile makes it possible to exist only on the stand that it comes with, at least it's a beautiful stand, which is not 400 bucks. That's not something that bothers me, to be honest. It has a gorgeous appearance and stance. What drives me crazy, however, is the following. In Samsung's marketing materials, one can read, with 2.2 channel built-in speakers, the M8 provides richer, more realistic sounds for an immersive overall experience. How can I put this uh, mildly? Emotional, damn it! This is the worst sounding monitor I have used so far. The sound is so inadequate that it would insult my smartphone if I dared to compare it with it. But don't take my word for it, take a listen.
To throw gasoline in the fire that I've started, the thin design of the M8 doesn't leave room for stereo jack on the back, where the ports are. The only way you can connect speakers to it is via Bluetooth, which is laggy for any productive work, or via a hub. I would have appreciated to have no speakers, which could reduce the price, and have a stereo jack on the back, even if that meant adding few extra millimeters of thickness. Its design is classy enough to accommodate a thicker body while still looking minimal and modern. The detachable camera is the next problem of the M8. If you're someone who doesn't need a detachable webcam, for example, you're not a matings person, tough luck. It is there whether you like it or not. It is part of the 300 extra dollars. Well, let's hope it's decent. I will send you to Jesus. <laughs> the camera is as bad as the speakers. Now, some have compared it with the studio display, still I would take this as a premature excitement of getting a review sample perhaps. The camera might look good in very particular scenarios, but if you have some daylight in the loose, good luck bringing out a decent picture. You might be better off in the dark. As with the M7, despite being proclaimed a monitor, the M8 doesn't allow you to cycle and choose monitor formats like the advertised 99% sRGB. Instead, I can choose between something called graphic and something called entertain, which are just marketing lingo. None of these settings will deliver the promised sRGB calibrated colors. I know this because I calibrated myself and the difference is staggering, but few people have that option. The thin design stirs the port situation on the back too. We don't have a display port, there's no headphones jack, and we have a mini HDMI port. Thankfully, there is a mini HDMI to HDMI cable in the box. I'll give the M8 some rest and I won't be going over the software bugs that I encounter because I know Samsung can clear them via a software update. Now at this point, the most important question is still not answered. Is the M8 worth the 300 plus dollars on top of the M7? Let's see what sets it apart. By the way, as I was preparing and researching this video topic, I found out that the M7 now comes in a 43 inch size, which is impressive. And second, by the way, if you end up enjoying this video, subscribe, because why not? So the M8 is brighter than the M7, about 40% brighter, which is a substantial difference. Samsung advertises it supporting HDR10+, which is just marketing again in terms of brightness levels. Still, it handles HDR10+, in terms of metadata and how it addresses each frame, making the picture more realistic. What's more important to me, however, and it should be important to you, is that the M8 is a 10-bit display, where the M7 is 8-bit. That's over 1 billion colors compared to 17 million on the M7. The response time is also very competitive on the M8, now 4 milliseconds compared to 8 milliseconds on the M7. That makes it more suitable for console experience. Also, while both monitors provide 65 watts of power via USB-C, the M8 is not as picky as the M7 and it works every time, no matter the laptop or the cable being used. So is everything I said helping you justify the price difference? Before I give you my two cents, I'd like to point something out. In my previous Samsung M7 review, few people rushed to conclusions. They took my initial negative remarks about the M7 as a direct insult by not watching the entire video. I'd like to be precise, as I'm trying to be objective here, pointing out the shortcomings of the M8 is important, but that doesn't mean it's a bad product. Quite the opposite. At $700, the M8 is half the price of some IPS competitors that don't even have a remote control, let alone any of the clever features. In a world of black and ugly plastic monitors, the build quality and design of the M8 are worlds apart. It is very well put together and its looks compete with monitors in the caliber of Apple displays. Features like the auto brightness I mentioned are typical for top tier competitors, yet they are here. And I'm not even factoring these smart features of the Samsung M8. The 10-bit panel alone is worth the price upgrade if you ask me. Any negative connotations I have are usually triggered by misleading marketing materials. Sure, it has speakers, but they're tiny and that's okay, just don't call them immersive. What's not misleading about the M8 is the fact that it's a great product, one that has unmatched versatility, especially in the latest M8 model. From a home TV to a workstation horse, it's a Swiss army knife with remote control. 
If you're still wondering if it's the right choice, however, my 2022 monitor guide video might just be what you're looking for. Click here and learn more about panel types, display size choices, aspect ratio, and more. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon. If you're looking for a minimal looking and stylish mouse pad to elevate your desk setup, look at the Enough mouse pad, which is my own creation. This large, genuinely black, four millimeters thick, eco-friendly felt desk pad is more than enough for any desk. Click on the first link in the description below to grab yours. As always, it's been an absolute pleasure. This is E, over and out.